um, before we go on, we'll be looking at the Word of God, and we'll be looking at Nehemiah chapter 9, Nehemiah chapter 9 from verse 17, Nehemiah chapter 9 from verse 17, and I'll be reading from the NLT version. My topic today is the Father who never abandons, the Father who never abandons, hallelujah. Verse 17, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17. They refused to obey and they did not remember the miracles you had done for them. This is Nehemiah praying now, and he was praying to God. So these are his words. They be instead, they became stubborn and appointed a leader to take them back to their slavery in Egypt. But you are a God of forgiveness, gracious and merciful slow to become angry and rich in unfailing love, you did not abandon them. Hallelujah. Even when they made an idol shaped like a calf and said, this is your God who brought you out of Egypt, they committed terrible blasphemies. But in your great mercy, you did not abandon them to die in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud still led them forward by day and the pillar of fire showed them the way through the night. You sent your good spirit to instruct them. And you did not give them manna from heaven or water for their test. For 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness and they lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. Father, thank you for this word. We pray as we discuss this word, you speak to us through your word. And help us to get the best from your word in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Give us understanding and give me utterance, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So, today, well, Father's Day, I'll be preaching to myself as a father. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to young men so that they know what it means to be a father. Hallelujah. And I'm preaching to young ladies so that when they are looking for a husband, they know what to look for. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I think everybody will benefit from this topic. The father who never abandons. On this father day, it's important to reflect on the importance of fatherhood in our society. And it's also good to draw lessons from the ultimate father, God. Um... Over time, we have seen that fathers are not just providers in the family. We don't just provide. A father is supposed to be grooming the family. I was wondering, is that why they call them bridegroom? or <laughs> Because they have to groom? I don't know. I don't know. But a, a father in the family is not, just, is not just a provider. You know, it takes one second to produce a man, to produce a boy. It's very easy to produce a boy. All you have to do is for X chromosome to mix with Y chromosome and your boy is um, produced, right? So that is easy. But to produce a father takes years, right? It takes time to produce a father. And the, the responsibility of us fathers is not just to produce boys. The, our responsibility is to replicate fathers, okay? A boy, I mean, by God's grace, I have a boy. It's easy, you know, uh, a boy's work is just to have a boy. <laughs> All right? But to make a father out of him is going to take years of work. And the work for us as fathers is to reproduce fathers, not just reproduce boys. And because many fathers have not been reproduced, now we have grown-up boys. Or how do we say it, right? They are all grown-up, but in their mind, they are what? They are boys because fathers are not replicating fathers. We are just reproducing boys. So fathers are so important in the society. Very, very important. I feel there is something called, um, I gave it this word. I've not seen it anywhere. But I call it, when I was thinking about it, gender reverse inequality. <laughs> when I say gender reverse inequality, you've heard of gender inequality before, right? But I call this one gender reverse inequality. Why? Because now... We are beginning to empower women, which is very good. I love it, <laughs> okay? Because of what has been happening, you know, there have been gender inequality, right? And now we are beginning to empower women. The women are getting stronger. The girls are coming up. But in a bid to empower women and girls, we are forgetting the boys, okay? 
So there is gender reverse, <laughs> you see my reverse inequality. I mentor boys in schools and I go to secondary school sometimes and I see what is going on. Our boys are being neglected. Now, if you look at most of the valedictorians or the people getting their awards in schools now, they're mostly girls, right? It's okay. I'm not saying it's bad, you know? But in a bid to empower the girls, let's not forget the what? The boys. Let's balance it. Let's balance it. The boys are beginning to suffer. The boys are beginning to lose identity. The boys are beginning to lose their voice. Okay? So things are happening. Of course, you can know that, and you know, the devil is very wicked. He targets the male gender because, of course, the cycle can never continue if the male gender is disturbed. Look at how many percent of men are in the prison. 93% of men are in the prison. Out of those 93% of men in the prison, you'll be sure that like more than 50% are fathers. How are they going to raise up their children from the prison? Okay? So that's why I'm saying that fathers are becoming scarce. We have more boys and men, but we have less fathers because fathers are not being reproduced. So it's very important. It's very important. Uh, and to even make the, to make the matter worse, we are losing fathers. Men are losing their identity. And even the few men we have now want to become female. <laughs> they, are, they are changing their gender. You, you see, men are, the men species is in trouble. It's in trouble. Some are in the prison. Some are on the streets. Some are, you know, scattered. Then some that even are doing well say, I'm tired of being a man. I want to be a woman. <laughs> and they change. So who is going to be the man? Who is going to lift the boys up? Okay? So the Father's Day is always a time for us to reflect on our duties. And for me, I like looking at God. Being a father, by God's grace, I've learned so much from God. Because I've seen how God feels when things happen. Like sometimes I discipline my daughter. That was one day I disciplined my daughter. And I saw her crying. I was crying inside because I don't like seeing her cry. <laughs> okay? But I have to discipline you. Okay? I have to do the job of a parent. I have to discipline you. But I, wouldn't, I don't want to show her that I'm also feeling bad. But I'm feeling bad. Then I thought about it. Wow. So these are God feels. Sometimes God disciplines us and we feel God has forgotten us. Not knowing that God is also feeling what we are feeling. We are crying. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I feel for you, but I have to. I have to. <laughs> I have to. I'm sorry. I know you are crying. I know it's hard for you, but it's for your good. Okay? Now, being a father, I understand. I understand what it is. But let's go back to our test again. Nehemiah 9, verse 16. The children of Israel, I mean, if you are the father of the children of Israel, you would have sent them out of, if I, you would have killed them. <laughs> the children of Israel, they were very stubborn people. Children of Israel. Children. You know, they call them children. I don't know why they keep calling them children. Children of Israel. But these are people that God took as his own peculiar children. But they showed God so much trouble. So much trouble. That's what Nehemiah was saying here. Look at it in verse 9. He said, but our ancestors were proud, number one. Imagine having a child that you give birth to and that child is proud. Stubborn. The child is stubborn. Right? I think I'm in verse 16. And they paid no attention to their commands. They refused to obey and they did not remember the miracles you have done for them. They did not remember anything. Everything that God does, they are always complaining. I, hope you, I pray you don't have children like that in Jesus' name. Instead, they became stubborn, appointed a leader to take them back to slavery in Egypt. But this is where I'm learning from God. See where we need to learn from God as fathers. But you are a God of what? Forgiveness. Gracious. Merciful. Slow to become angry. And rich in unfailing love. You did not abandon them. You did not abandon them. The first thing I would say is God is a steadfast father. Somebody, can we say steadfast? 
steadfast. You know what? You know what I mean by steadfast, right? It does not change. God is a steadfast father. You cannot change God. Nothing and no one can change God. No. So let me tell you something. I don't know if you know this. Your obedience cannot change God. It only changes you. Your disobedience cannot change God. It only hurts you. I hope you understand. God is God. God is God. Nothing can change him. The children of Israel, like I've said, they were proud, stubborn. They ignored God. They did all those things. But, in fact, they abandoned God. They abandoned God because they made idols and did everything. But God did not abandon them. And that's what I want you to live here with about your heavenly father. That no matter what happens to you, God cannot abandon you. (laughs) Hallelujah. God can never abandon you. It does not abandon. If anything happens, you abandon him and you go. But for God himself, God cannot abandon you. God is a God of forgiveness. That means that no matter what you have done, he's going to forgive you. No matter what you've done, he's going to forgive you. Hallelujah. Uh, And that is hard for us fathers. You know, I I was speaking to a father last week. His daughter did something very bad. Very, very bad. (laughs) <laughs> very, very bad. And because the daughter reached out to us, we had to talk to him. And he was telling me on the phone, in my generation, this has never happened. <laughs> so anywhere you want to keep her, just, <laughs> just take her. <laughs> just keep her. Ah, no, 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 this cannot enter my house. I understand. It's hard to forgive. It's hard to forgive. But fathers, we, the way we can be fathers is to what? Forgive. I don't pray for my, for my children or for your children to be bad. Amen. <laughs> we pray our children will be well in Jesus' name. Amen. But mother, no matter what happens, we must forgive. God is a God of forgiveness. He said he's able to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all what? Our righteousness. He's able to forgive us all our sins. No matter what you've done, no matter how bad you are, God can forgive you. It sounds strange, but yes, God can forgive you because he's a God of forgiveness. That's what the Bible says. He's a God of grace. He empowers you to do stuff. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of mercy. He will have mercy on you, no matter what you do, because he's our father. He's a God of mercy. He's a God of patience. He's waiting for us. Some of you, you know God is waiting for you. There are some things God has told you to do five years ago you've not done. And God is still waiting. <laughs> God is not going to say, okay, um, uh, let me forget. Let me for-. No, God is still waiting. He's going to wait and he's going to wait and he's going to wait for you until you obey. That's God. God is waiting. He's very patient. And of course, God is love. God is love. God is love. And this is what we learn as fathers that we must learn to forgive, we must empower our children, we must give grace to our children to do what they have to do. Hallelujah. That we must have mercy on them when they make mistakes. Okay? Because children will make mistakes. Do you believe that? They will make mistakes. As fathers, we must, we must have mercy on them when they make mistakes. Then we must have patience. Allow them to grow. Okay? Okay? I like them to grow. Now I'm losing patience with my son because I'm like, you are not working yet. You should be working by now. Come and move. <laughs> but we should have patience. Patience. Let them grow. Hallelujah. Let them what? Let them grow. Have patience. Then, of course, show love. Show love. Show love. You know, this morning I was, my dad is um, 84. I think he's 84, right? And um, I just remember that P Father's Day. And I was like, wait, let me send him a text. And I was writing the text. At the end of the text, I'm like, I've never, have I told my dad I love you before? <laughs> you know? And it was sounding strange for me to type, love you, daddy. You know? But I'm like, ah, I don't think I have. He's 84. How many years? I don't know. (laughs) Let me better tell him today. So I wrote there, love you, (laughs) daddy. (laughs) You know, I know some of us did not grow up in that culture where we use the word love. But we must learn to say, I love you. We must learn to say, I love you. My spiritual father 
you know, I call him my spiritual father. He has even tested me today because I sent him a message too. He's one person that I'm yet, because from the, every time he say, I love you. And I'm like, this man, calm down. All the time he say, I love you. I'm, I'm still learning how to say, I love you. He said, I love you deeply. I'm like, Jesus, what do I say back? I love you too. <laughs> you know? But we must learn how to say love. I'm telling you, let's learn to, some of us will feel, well, don't you know I love you? If, if I, I'm giving you food every day. I'm giving you money for school fees. I'm buying clothes for you. That's to show you I love you. <laughs> but we should learn to say it. Okay? Even the young boys, learn to say to your parents, what? I love. I'm telling young boys. Now, you know I said I'm preaching to young boys too. Start practicing. If you don't know how to tell your mom, your dad, I love you, when you get married, it will be hard. They're your own children. You will not tell them. So start practicing from now. Let it be easy for you to say what? I love you. I mean, your A, your a says it very well. He's an apostle of love. He doesn't have, he doesn't have issue. <laughs> he tells everybody I love you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So steadfast love. But let's look at number two because of time. God is a supportive father. He's not just steadfast. He's supportive. In verse 19, he said, But in your great mercy, you did not abandon them to die in the wilderness. He said, The pillar of cloud still led them forward by day. Then the pillar of fire by night. Do you know what the pillar of cloud? Because they were walking in the wilderness. The pillar of cloud will shield them from the sun because it's scorching, right? The sun is scorching. And so if they just keep walking in the wilderness without a covering, the father said, I must provide something for you. These are stubborn children, very stubborn children. But the father said, Don't worry, I will still cover you with my cloud. You know, he gave them pillar of cloud. Then in the night, he gave them pillar of fire. Why? Because, you know, you're in the wilderness and animals, strange animals can come and fight them. So the fire pushes away the animals, okay? So he gave them pillars. And we as fathers, we must learn to give our children pillars. We must learn to give them pillars on which they can grow in. They should have spiritual pillars. As fathers, we should, uh, we should, we should strive that our families will have spiritual pillars, Every morning we'll pray. In the night we'll pray. We read our Bible or you do this. We are the one to dictate. Unfortunately, it's the women that are taking the role these days. But it should not be. The fathers should be the one saying, no, let's dictate. So we give spiritual pillars. We give moral pillars. So we, we show them this is how you behave. This is how you walk. This is how you dress. This is how you move. If you don't teach them, who's going to know? You know? Nobody, we, and we are looking at our boys, some of them, too, they don't know what to do. They get to adolescent age, they're already having beards, they don't know how to shave. The father is not going to tell them how to shave. Nobody taught me how to shave. So I learned and learned, I bruised this part, I bruised, <laughs> I bruised this part, you know. There are many things our boys need to learn, and our fathers need to step up. Hallelujah. You don't leave it for the mothers. I know mothers like to do all round work. <laughs> But we fathers need to step in. Hallelujah. Moral pillars, wisdom pillars, intellectual pillars, financial pillars. We are supposed to give our children financial pillars. Hallelujah. So we are supposed to be supportive father. God was supportive. He was supportive. He gave them a pillar of cloud and he gave them a pillar of fire in the night. The last one before we pray is that God is a sustaining father. So he's steadfast, he's supportive, and he's sustaining. He sustained them. By the way, as I'm talking about God and relating it to Father, I want you to also see God as your Father. That he's steadfast to you. Hallelujah. He's going to support you. How many of you believe that God will support you? God will support you. Hallelujah. Don't ever feel God has left me. Like, you see... Nehemiah wrote it two times that God did not abandon them. God can never abandon you. He's going to support you. He's going to support you all the way. No matter what you're doing, he's going to support you. In as much as you listen to him, you follow his way, you do what he wants you to do, he's going to support you. And he's not going to, he's there waiting for you. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 20. Let's see that before we pray. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 20. He said, you sent your good spirit to instruct them. 
That is, God sent his own spirit to instruct them. So as fathers, we should give what? Instructions. Hallelujah. And if God is your father, you must listen to these instructions. But look at what God did. And you did not stop giving them manna from heaven. Despite their disobedience and stubbornness, God did not stop giving them manna from where? From heaven. And all water for their what? For their test. Let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. Uh, for 40 years, I'm going to come back to that 40 years. You sustained them in the wilderness and they lacked nothing. Ah, they lacked nothing. So God made sure that he was sustaining them. And that is the work for us fathers as we learn from God that we must make sure that the family is sustained no matter what. We have to work hard to make sure the family is sustained, right? He sustained them in the wilderness. They lacked nothing. He provided manna for them. He gave them water to drink. Food is not a problem. You will be fine. We will deal with your stubbornness. But our food, okay? Our food, we will deal with your stubbornness. But I can't send you away from the house because you disobeyed me. I can't lock you out of the house because you disobeyed me. No. Eat. In the, and I, 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 liked one, I, I liked something that one, uh, one of my mentors said. He said, no matter what my children does, right, my house will always be open for them to sleep in the night. And I learned that. He said, no matter what they do, no matter what people have said concerning them, my house will always be open for them to sleep where? In the night. We don't, and that is, that is a replica of what I see how God behaves. God said, I know people are stubborn. People, I don't know where they brought you from. <laughs> you know? But I will provide manna. I will provide water. You will be fine. Okay, now let me go to that 40 years. When I was reading it, he said, God sustained them for 40 years. He sustained them in the wilderness. So where did we get these 18 years from? After 18 years, get out of my house. Where did we get that from? Is that American standard or what standard was that? Is that? <laughs> because at 18 years, they are not well done. They are not adults. They don't know anything at 18 years. That is just the first uh, level. I don't even see them as adults. They are still youths to me. 18 years. So if you say at 18 years, you push them out of the house, go to, and, and some of them, I know they want to run away 18 years because they don't know. The fact that they want to run away 18 years is to tell you they are not yet matured. You know, because when you are matured, you want to stay in your parents' house and you utilize all the resources first while you are making money. <laughs> you know? So for 40 years, and I agree with this 40 years because... A 40-year-old man, you can say, okay, now, now you're an adult. You know? Now you can, you can go on your own. You, can, you, don't, you don't have to live with me. Now, I mean, that is the mark. But God gave them, he stayed for 40 years, sustained them. They lacked nothing. Look at this part. Their clothes did not wear out. That is a miracle. You know, they didn't have uh, messes. They didn't have Walmart to change in the wilderness. <laughs> so they were not buying clothes every, how many times do people buy clothes in a year? You buy every week, right? I know you buy every week. <laughs> you buy every week. The children of Israel did not have messes to buy clothes from every week. They didn't have Walmart. They didn't have uh, uh, any shopping online. So it's the same clothes that they wore from Egypt they were wearing. But God made sure that that cloth was still neat. For 40 years, it looked new. That's a miracle. That is a, what? a miracle. Like, it looked new. Nothing happened to their clothes. It looks new. So that means that God has power to sustain our material things. Hallelujah. He has power to say, you see, your material stuff, I'm going to keep it for you. Your cars, your house, your stuff, I'm going to sustain it for you so you don't spend unnecessarily. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I'm not hearing yes. <laughs> then God has, now look at the other one, and their feet did not swell. Their feet did not swell. For 40 years, they were walking in the wilderness, no car, no bends, no, uh, what else? Uh, what other cars do we have? Uh, jets, nothing. For 40 years, they were walking in the wilderness, and their feet did not got swollen. That means God preserved their physical health. And I pray that God will preserve you in Jesus' name. 
Oh, you know, you can stop playing that song. Let's, let's see, maybe we'll still sing that. He knows my name. All right. But today, even though we are learning what it means to be a father, that we should love, we should not abandon our children, we should sustain our children and everything. But at the same time, I want you to know that God cannot abandon you. Hallelujah. God will sustain you even in your wilderness. God will sustain you in your wilderness. No matter what you are going through, because it could be that where you are right now, you are in a transition, you don't know where you are going. But I want you to always have it at the back of your mind that God is your father. Hallelujah. God is your father. God is your father. God is your father. He's a steadfast father. He's a supportive father. And he's a sustaining father. Everything you hand over to him will never fail in the name of Jesus. And I pray for even some of us here. I have, I actually have letters for some of our boys that I will give to them. I want the young boys to also know that God is your father. Hallelujah. And that God will stand by you. And God has plans and purpose for you. And those plans will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Why not just go to the Lord and go to the prayer. Uh, let's pray. And just say, Lord, I thank you because you are my father. We sang that song, I have a maker. He formed my heart. Before even time began, my life was in his hands. Ike, can you give him some volume? He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And hears me when I call. That's the kind of father that we serve. Say, Lord, I thank you because you are steadfast. I thank you because you are sustaining me. Thank you because you are you are my supportive father. I give you the adoration and I praise you. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and yes me when I call. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and hears me when I call. Let's sing it for the last time. He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and yes me when I call. For the last time, He knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and yes me when I call. You can keep playing. Father, I thank you because you are our Father. Thank you, O oh God, because you are a steadfast Father. Thank you because you are a supportive Father. And I thank you because you are a sustaining Father. Lord, I pray for everyone here that feels lonely, that feels abandoned, that feels like, you know, I cannot connect with anybody or with any Father or anything, both biological or spiritual Father. I pray that you will show them that you are their Father. In the name of Jesus. I pray you will be steadfast in your lives. Let them know that you have not abandoned them. Lord, I pray this week you are going to give everyone a sign to show that you are their father. In the name of Jesus. I pray for those who have not known you at all, who have not given their life to Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you will convict them. And as they come to you, I pray you accept them 
as your child in Jesus name and I pray for us fathers that have been given these big responsibilities to nurture and to groom our children and families I pray that you will give us the grace not to fail in Jesus name I pray that we'll be present we'll also be steadfast we'll be supportive and we'll be sustaining in the mighty name of Jesus I pray for this week let it be a beautiful week let it be a blessed week let it be a bountiful week for everyone and I pray that your goodness and mercy will continue to follow us all the days of our lives in Jesus name thank you father thank you Lord even as we fellowship with the food I pray you bless and sanctify it in Jesus name thank you father for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed amen God bless you and have a great week we have some um, some uh, refreshment there so make sure you thank you for listening to this message I hope you are blessed if you were blessed please subscribe to this channel so you can get more of our contents please share to your friends and families and please support this ministry by going to our website and clicking on the give menu I pray as you do so the Lord will bless you and the Lord will continue to increase you and give you peace on every side God bless you. Bye.